Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today we are going to be going over Lionel Scaloni's Argentina, obviously the current manager of Argentina in the World Cup and I thought, you know what, it's a perfect time, it's Messi's last World Cup, we've got to show some respect to the GOAT, let's make a tactics video on the current manager and hopefully we can make Argentina World Cup champions. As always guys, if you do enjoy these tactic videos, be sure to leave a like on the video and do comment on what manager you want to see next. I've got tons of suggestions from you guys. I am working through them slowly. At the moment, we are making a few World Cup tactics as well. Obviously, it's the perfect time. Only comes around once every four years. So we've got to take advantage of it and do subscribe to the channel. But let's break down this tactic. But first, we'll get into the results. So these are going to be the results that we got. And it was a nice mixture. Um, we're only going to be watching the games, like the actual goals, etc. Um, from the games which did actually sort of mean something. So the friendlies, we might watch the group games. We'll watch, obviously, all the games from that group as well. Um, so we're going to kick things off. We'll go over some of the stats. Um, against Japan in a 5-1 win in a friendly match. Um, it was a game which we definitely deserve to win. It's going to be 19 shots, 10 on target. 3.64 xg and 56 percent possession to japan they didn't actually have a bad game to be honest possibly could have got two goals but we just come out way too dominant Lionel messi with two which is always good to see such a shame this is going to be his, his last world cup same with ronaldo but i've lost a little bit of respect for ronaldo so this one's all about messi so we then bounce, well not bounce back, sorry, we then bounce into another friendly against portugal and this one is going to be ronaldo of course that does get the goal <clears throat> Have a quick look at the statistics again it was a game which we did deserve to win it's just a little bit possibly we didn't we didn't put the ball in the back of the net at the end of the day we had better shots um slightly less on target better xg and tons more possession so it was a game we should have at least got a point from and it was quite disappointing we then actually progress into the world cup groups so obviously saudi arabia they had that big upset in real life and to be honest it could have happened again here we only managed to get a draw from this game this game we are going to watch the goals from first off though this should have been a win. I mean, 34 shots, 12 on target, 3.69 XG, and 62% of the ball. But we are going to watch some of the goals, or all of the goals, actually, because these. this is why I love making these World Cup videos, because we actually get to see an entire tournament of goals from our current team. We're going to have this on TV, and let's watch it then. So it is going to be Argentina taking the lead. Di Maria into DePaul, takes his time, drives his way, and it's a driven finish into the bottom right corner. But it doesn't like it's too long no they bounce back in the 61st it's going to be salim down the right hand or left hand side sorry don't know how i got confused there and he just drives defenders go to sleep and he's tucked it in the right corner the same as we did and that is actually going to be all the goals from that game so only two goals they did get a sending off inside of well, 90th minute let's have a quick look at that why not is it going to be is it, is it a second yellow i believe it will be here he'll come across no okay it's building up yeah, it, it was a yellow card, so it was a deserved sending off, but still, they, they held us to a point, so quite a good result for them. Um, not for us, though. However, we do bounce back against Mexico in what was a 5-2 win, so a lot more goals in this one, a little bit more positive, and we did deserve to win. More possession, more XG, more shots, more shots overall as well. Lionel Messi getting two goals. We just want to see Messi have a really good World Cup, you know. It's his last one. Let's try and get him as many goals and as many moments as we physically can. So, let's watch the goals then. There is going to be seven in this game. And it is going to be Mexico, I believe, that do get off to the start and make it 1-0. It's going to be Raul into Lozano. Otamendi misses the header. And it's a very good finish from Lozano, to be fair to him. And that puts them 1-0 up. We do bounce back, though, quite soon after. It's going to be Correa running down the right-hand side into Otamendi, who's very pushed up, into Messi, and that is what he does best. Into the bottom left corner, an easy goal to tie it up 1-1. They come again here, though, Mexico, pretty much instantly bouncing back into the lead. It's going to be Jimenez cutting it back into Sanchez, ball across into Lozano, and did that take a deflection off the centre-back? If not, fantastic finish, nevertheless, sort of on the half volley. We win it back there brilliantly with Enzo. It's going to be Correa with the ball. A wonder ball over the top who goes right to Lorato Martinez. And he doesn't miss those. One of the best strikers inside of FM23. 
You heard it here first. Fantastic player. And that is to tie it up at 2-2, I believe. We win the ball back brilliant there with Lionel Messi. Is he going to miss? Of course he isn't. An elegant chip to make it 3-2. And we, are, we we didn't stop there. Obviously, this did end 5-2. And we go again here. It's going to be a Kuna. A bit of set-piece action into Lorato Martinez. Frees himself from two defenders there to leap and get the header. Tagliafico into Martinez. Back into Enzo. You're seeing a little bit of the build-up here. Di Maria, a wonder ball into Julian Alvarez. Obviously, a player who has been doing quite well for himself in real life as well. And that is going to make that game done and dusted with a 5-2 win. We then go over to the last World Cup group game, a game which we did we did really want to win, um, obviously just so we didn't have too many draws or even a loss. And that is going to be against Poland in a game which they did actually take the lead. And we, we did, uh, no, we took the lead, sorry. They bounced back with a penalty. And then Lionel Messi was the man that did sort of separate both teams. But it was a game which, to be honest, was very equal um, in terms of XG. We did have more shots. We had more on target and a bit more of the ball. But this game, to be honest, could have went either way. Um, it wasn't a clear favourite. It wasn't dominated by a certain team. So, to be fair, I definitely would have taken this result. We do take the lead here, though, as you can see. It's a very, very dodgy bit of goalkeeper from Chesney. And it's going to be Enzo that does tap in the rebound. Obviously, Lewandowski does bounce back. You know, he did miss a penalty in real life, but in this game, I don't think I've ever seen him miss one. So I knew it was going in. We do hit on the break here, though, with Lorato taking his time, driving slowly up the, up the side here, sorry, into Lionel Messi, who does get the goal, and he just runs. And it's a great finish. Could the keeper have done better? Got a bit lower, possibly. But Lionel Messi is going to be the match winner. Exactly what we want to be saying, considering it is his last World Cup. I keep saying it because it doesn't seem real. Um, Obviously, have been watching him for years. It's a real shame. But what a way to win that match with the star himself. We then get into the knockouts, the second round. And by the way, can you just look at how difficult we had this? France, England, Germany, Portugal. A ridiculous, ridiculous build up to the final. We're going to start off with a 4 2 win against France. Obviously, probably one of the hardest teams you can play. And it was a game again, which is very similar in terms of XG and even possession. We did have more shots and more shots overall. So we did deserve to win, in my opinion. Possibly 4 2 is a bit flattering. Could have been just by a goal, but we'll take it. And we did obviously progress. We're going to watch the goals. So France do take the lead here by the looks of it. It's going to be Pavard, obviously, a fantastic fullback. Back into Benzema, a great ball into Mbappe, defenders fall asleep, and he's, he's never going to miss from there, into the bottom left corner, and he does make it 1-0. We do bounce back here, though, with Lionel Messi, a great ball in, and it's going to be Martinez, I'm um, not Lorato, um, I don't believe anyway, I believe that he's going to be Lissandro Martinez with a great header. Messi, again, a little set-piece action, this is Lorato Martinez, a ball into Di Maria, little turn, and a great finish. A lot of keepers would have thought he would have gone in this corner here, but he does actually hit it at the near post. They do bounce back here, though, to make it 2-2. Kylian Mbappe with a fantastic first touch. A great ball play to him as well. And he tucks it into the bottom right corner. So this game, up until now, was actually very sort of, you know, goal for goal. But this is where we turn it on. Lionel Messi picking up the ball. A wonder ball through into Lorato Martinez. Takes his time with it and hits it into the top left-hand corner. Pretty much unsavable for the keeper in that scenario. And this is going to be the fourth goal. Otamendi... Good clearance, to be fair, but it is going to be Tagliafico who picks it up into DePaul, who hits it, and it's an absolute stinker from the keeper. This is also after the patch, guys, so they need to do a little bit more work to the keepers, in my opinion, because that is not acceptable. We then go and we play England. Not a nice game to play because I never like playing England when, when I do tests because it's, it's, it's my country, you know. You, you can't... It's not nice beating your own country, but it did happen. Obviously, we did actually come out on top in a 3-2 win. And this game here, again, we, we, we got lucky. I'm going to be honest. We did get a little bit lucky. All we had in our favour was possession. They had better XG, more shots on target, and more shots overall. Playing that sort of, um, but it's going to be the, the usual formation we used to see. This is taken to the extreme, though. It looks very negative, but they did actually manage to get more XG, so it must have worked for them going forwards. But we do come out on top by the goal. So let's watch some of the goals now, um, and hopefully we can see some good ones. Romero into Messi. What a ball that is from him into Lorato Martinez. 
James clears it, but he sort of helps us out there. The, def or the tackle actually sort of sets us up to a little bit of a gap at that sort of near post, and we take advantage of it. Lionel Messi again here, a beautiful ball over the top into Lorato Martinez, a wonder touch, and a little chip over, I believe that is Ramsdale in goal. It is Lionel Messi, though. Can we just appreciate the balls that he has been playing over the top? If you think Messi is the best player in the world, by the way, do smash the like button right now. And if you don't think he is, let me know in the comments who you think is. But what a ball that is from Lionel Messi. Lorato Martinez takes his time here. Still going, actually, down the left-hand side. Took a lot of time on the ball into Di Maria who goes, and there's a little cheeky inside of the foot finish into the left-hand corner. And this is where it does get a little bit annoying because it could have actually been a lot more comfortable. A poor pass there. And Bellingham, obviously, you, you don't want Bellingham running at you. And he's going to play it to Saka, into Foden, and they make it 3-2. So we did actually have a free goal advantage, but we nearly bottled it. Luckily, we didn't. England here in the 83rd minute, basically. Grealish taking his time back into Foden, into Rice, who hits an absolute wonder goal. And luckily we didn't concede another because they had the momentum all behind them and we were doing the sort of defensive work. But we pulled through, we didn't bottle it, and that put us through all the way to the semi-finals against Germany. In what was a 2-0 win, by the way, in a game which we absolutely dominated this German side, a very interesting formation there, but we dominated XG, um, on target, shots overall. They did have more possession. They had a lot more possession, but I do always say this. Possession doesn't always mean that you're going to win games. Possession doesn't win you games alone. You do need to get the ball in the back of the net, as we did here. It's going to be Lissandro Martinez into Racuna. Di Maria down the left-hand side here. A wonder ball over the top into Lorato. And what a finish that is on the volley. Tucks it into the bottom right corner in the 52nd minute. He gets another goal here, I believe, actually. Correa with the ball into Paredes, a wonder ball again into Correa, driven ball across into Lorato. I'm not going to state the keeper too much because that was a, quite a lot of power right at him and it just went through his legs, but a very comfortable win in that game nevertheless. And we actually take on Portugal, which to be honest, are probably the easiest team out of France, England and Germany. So we sort of beat the big, the real, real powerhouses and then we had a slightly easier final, but it was, you know, it was only a 2-1 win. Um, we did go 2-0 up, and then the Ronaldo did score in the 70th minute. Pepe got sent off in the 92nd minute, so we are going to be looking at that, obviously, as well. But Acuna with a ball in the box into Lorato, and he tucks it in the top left-hand corner in what was a goal to make it 1-0. Rodriguez, a ball over the top into... Oh, Messi didn't get it. He went on oh, Correa, sorry. Went back into Messi. We sort of dummies that, I believe, into Lorato, and that does make it 2-0. Obviously, Portugal did have something to say. They did get a goal here. Pepe, a ball over the top into Jota, who does get the assist. We know that. A little cut back into Ronaldo. Very weird, that, actually. Don't know if the ball went over the defender, and Ronaldo buries it into the bottom left corner, but you know what we've got to look at. Firstly, it was a game we did deserve to win. We absolutely dominated the game, but we have got to look at this Pepe sending off because it's like, it's like his signature trademark at the end of the day. Let's have a little look. H how did this happen? We win the ball back there with a great bit of pressing. Di Maria. It doesn't happen yet. A bit of build-up play here. We're getting to see some of the passing, which, which is good. That's always a good thing. So calm on the ball, this Argentinian side, I must say. So calm on the ball. Building up very well here. All for a red card that we're waiting to see. It's coming here. On Messi, is it? No. Lorato, it's going to be... Where is it? Oh, this is a this is a long build-up. You are seeing how good this tactic does build up, though. That is the positive. Correa into Pepe. Oh, he passes it right to Messi. Then does he just lash out? He, la he lashes out on the edge. Typical Pepe loses the ball and then lashes out. That is to be expected from him. And that is going to be the World Cup 1. So, I mean, a massive accomplishment. If we go home quickly, we can see he's actually going to be Lorato Martinez as top goal scorer and the best performer. Unfortunately, not Messi. And it is going to be Correa also with the most assists. And everyone, Lissandro Martinez, 94% pass completion. But let's break down this tactic right now. And hopefully, this tactic works as well for you as it did for me. Because this absolutely was tons of fun to use and as i said it's a world cup winning tactic so this is going to be scaloni's argentina now it does shape up as a 442 they do also alternate to a 433 sometimes and i'm going to show you how you can do that it's very simple you can simply just obviously 
drop this here, put him central, and put the wingers up here as well. And that turns it into a 4-3-3. Um, but for me, this 4-4-2 works so well. I kept it. 4-4-2 is a great tactic, by the way, guys, especially in this FM. I've used quite a few variations of it, and it always does reasonably well, or in this case, very well. We're going to start off with what is going to be mentality set to positive in possession, fairly wide, overlap left and right, slightly shorter, slightly higher, be more expressive, work the ball into the box. It's quite a patient tactic and mixed crosses. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to the playmaker and take short kicks. Out of possession, a higher defensive line. If you feel like you're conceding too many, you could drop it a little bit. High press line of engagement, much more often. I think you say much more often, not much more often, more often, and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Going over to the player roles, then obviously quite a key part of the video. The sweeper keeper on take more risks. The wing back on the right on the support role. Aim the crosses at the center. Run wide with the ball and get further forward. On the left hand side, we've got a wing back on attack. So pretty much as you can pretty much you can figure this out yourself. We've got one um, winger on support on that side. The wing back set to attack vice versa on the other side. This wing back though attack aim the crosses at the center run wide with the ball get further forward and cross from the byline Two central defenders both on defend shoot less often hold position and dribble less and exactly the same on the other side. On the right hand side winger, we have got a default winger on attack. Aim the crosses at the center, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often, cross from the byline, get further forwards and stay wider. On the left hand side, we've got an inverted winger on support and simple, simple as chips on this one, dribble more and cut inside with the ball. The two in midfield then, and these are the best two I could really find that worked in terms of this system and the realism of recreating the tactic. A ball winner midfielder on the defend duty, shoot less often, dribble less, take fewer risks, hold position and tackle harder. Again, if you feel like he's getting too many bookends, feel free to take tackle harder off. Next to him, you want a Metzala on support, get further forward, stay wider, move into channels and roam from position. This is going to be your creative midfielder, the sort of one that lights up the pitch, creates the chances for the wingers, who then possibly can create chances for the strikers, or can go directly to the strikers themselves. The two up top then, on the right-hand side, this is where Messi played. We actually do have the Trocasta, Trista? I always butcher that, I don't know why. We want dribble more, take more risks, move into channels, roam from position, and ease off tackles next to him you want an advanced forward on shoot more often and move into channels and that is going to be the argentina tactic broken down as always if you guys do want to download this you can find it on the fm scout website if not i do appreciate anyone that does take the time to watch the breakdown learn about how this tactic sort of builds itself up how i made it etc etc but that is going to be it for me today guys if you have enjoyed be sure to leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and i will see you in the next video